Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. And I'll tell you what, it is crazy out there in the news in the energy space. Uh, Michael's on assignment having a good time tonight. So let's start with the top stories. Demagogues imperiling global flight against climate breakdown, says Kerry. You got to love an old Kerry story. Apple's EV exit shows the challenges of the once red hot market. This one is pretty interesting. Home builders are fighting green building. Homeowners will pay. This is going to go along with a couple other stories here as well. Diamond suggests other states which should be more like Texas. Got to love me some Texas. Warren Buffett regrets owning utilities. The man's made a lot of money. You got to listen to what he says. Atlas to acquire high crush Permian propellants. Um, You got to have to love that. Um, You know, I'll tell you, the uh, M&A market is going to be rolling around here pretty quick in a lot of different areas. So with that, Let's go ahead and pig pile into the stories. Um, The demagogues imperiling global flight against climate breakdown. This one is really kind of irritating from a standpoint that if we looked at facts, figures, um, and fiscal responsibility and lowered the lowest cost kilowatt per hour, we would be having discussions about this. This is a quote. Uh, He hit out a rise of the disinformation and uh, demagoguery, which he said are damaging the transition away from fossil fuels and being tactic uh, used as tactics uh, for special interest to delay action. Quote, people are not being told the truth about impacts from what making this transition to net zero greenhouse emission, he said, Larry, uh, I mean, excuse me, Lurch, I mean, excuse me, Kerry, uh, they are being scared, purposely frightened by the demagoguery that is oblivious to the facts or dis- uh, distorting the facts, and in some case, outright lying going on. I agree with him. This is the first time I agree with him. But he's not reading the facts. Um, John Kerry, if you are listening to the podcast, you are always welcome to come on this podcast and the invitation. I will fly out anywhere you are uh, and I will use a commercial flight, not a uh, a personal flight. So uh, with that, there are so many facts going on about um uh, net zero. Let's leave the argument whether or not we need to go there or not. You got to have an energy transition with an energy plan. And if one side won't have a discussion, here's where the rest of our stories are going to come in rolling in. There is a major bounce uh, out of the EV market, and we're seeing the next big one. Apple's EV exit shows the challenges of the once red hot market. You're going to hear it here a second. I think that Tesla is going to be an excellent survivor. I think that in the U.S. market, Elon has got the high end and the market cornered. And again, this is not about whether or not you should own an EV. It's whether or not we should have child labor abuse, child abuse, uh, bringing in all of the minerals. Uh, I like Toyota's um, aspect of going to uh, hybrids. And in this, um, today's big story, this is, uh, we're looking at Apple scrapping its plans for the uh, electric car. Uh, it, they are throwing out 10 years of work. Um, they blindsided nearly 2,000 employees on uh, trying to get them out there. Uh, many workers will transfer to the Apple's art, uh, AI division to work on generative AI. I'll tell you, 
uh elon just has pushed them right on out i would not want to compete with elon and uh, i'd love to sit down and visit with him someday uh, i got a few suggestions for him all right let's go to the next one here home builders are fighting green building homeowners will pay this one is really getting, and it affects a lot. It is in the energy space as they are trying to force everyone to have high energy um, uh, uh, methodology in building their houses and making them more efficient, smaller, uh, that make new houses more efficient and compatible with clean technology. That is more expensive, and we're pushing the prices of houses outside of the average person now with this. Uh, let's go through some of it. And the EIA, the, uh, uh, the unbelievable, the energy um, uh, group there, housing climate impact um, is uh, carbon emissions in 2022 residential was a uh, big part of it. I believe it was 19%. And so when you sit back and go, what was in this 19% um, is you can't just lump residential in there. Is that the building? Is that uh, driving to and from work? Um, I'm not sure that I really uh, think that this is fair. The cost argument that the home builders is, is saying is deeply flawed in two ways. A $20,000 figure for increasing on each home uh, was only from one survey. It appears to be a wild exaggeration. A federal study found the new standards would actually raise building expenses by 4,700 to 6,500 for a single family home. Uh, lowering energy bills means homeowner would recoup their upfront cost in just a few years. This one I highly disagree with because it never works that way. And if we had a balanced plan to get from energy, um, uh, fossil fuels, and you want to go to net zero in a least a cost, cost effective way, um, it would not matter. And people would be able to afford this, which came first. Uh, the house that had a lot of uh, insulation or having any money just to have a roof over your head. And uh, this is not going to um, pan out very well for them at all. In fact, uh, Miss Producer, if you could bring up the video, I have a video uh, that uh, that some of the folks in the energy department sent over. <laughs> And he's he's swinging and boom and uh so when you sit back and kind of, that's a normal meeting in the energy department trying to make up regulatory actions so uh thank you miss producer i appreciate that let's go to our next story diamond suggests other states should be more like texas this has a little bit of uh about three or four different flavors in there and last month, uh, we had a article that rolled across our desk, and it uh, said that for the first time, Texas has outdistanced New York for the number of financial jobs. So the financial headquarters is now turning to Texas, and it's because of regulatory issues now it's also regulatory issues in the energy it's regulatory issues uh in the financial sectors and it's uh persecution against uh corporate uh corporations so in new york city the elected not the mayor not the governor but a lot of the elected they don't want business they didn't let amazon come in and build a whole new thing there so we're seeing that the not only the elected officials, but the regulatory uh, issues through uh, legislation, through regulatory action is starting to really take a toll on businesses. 
who's going to pay for the taxes when all the businesses leave? You got to have some forethought there. It's kind of like Elon getting forced out and leaving Delaware because of the way they handled him. Think of the tax revenue that Delaware just lost and is going to Texas. So hats off to Texas. One other side note, Texas is now going to be having more storage than any other state. And then they are already the leader in wind and solar and wind. Uh, and when you take a look at they are half the price of the electricity in New York and in California because of a balanced diet of energy. So balanced diet. You got to have all forms of energy um, and you got to be able to balance the books. And Texas had a surplus and they even lowered their taxes. It can be done, folks. All right. Warren Buffett regrets owning electric utilities. I don't always agree with Warren, but he sure knows a lot more about making money than I do. Buffett recognizes the U.S. electric uh, utility industry has a voracious, voracious need for new investment, but at the same time, a deteriorating investment climate prevents him from investing in incremental sums. Boy, I'll tell you what, this is going right along because the regulatory issues are being shoved at the energy uh, utility corporations, and they are having to spend money in ways that are not efficient. And uh, here's a quote out of the article. One theme of Mr. Buffett's letter this year uh, to his investors uh, was explaining why, as an investor controlling a balance sheet of almost $1 trillion in, in assets, he can't commit to more capital to certain businesses he really likes. With respect to utilities, he wrote, quote, I will be many years until we know the final tally from uh, BHE's forest fire losses and can intelligently make decisions about the de desirability of future investments in vulnerable Western states. Uh, if there's any doubt, he meant to change for the worse, and let's explore why. I'll tell you. Uh, again, he has done a lot of great investing deals. Don't agree with some of his uh, philosophies, but uh, when you take a look at California's Pacific Corp and Pacific Gas and Electric, uh, they've had some real serious management problems. Michael and have I always said good management, good numbers. Um, so let's come over here. Atlas to acquire high crush Permian propent, uh, assets for $450 million. This is a kind of a, a follow along with a, not only um, the EMP uh, um, operators are going to be seeing more uh, M&A activity, but you're going to see a lot of the oil field service and uh, uh, they're going to be streamlining and going through. Michael and I have been talking about the number of rigs that are, are being uh, run and they're starting with the technology. We're still producing the most oil the U.S. has ever produced out of the Permian. The transaction includes 150 million upfront cash and 175 million shares in common stock and 125 million in deferred cash payments in the form of a seller's note. Uh, pro forma production capacity expect to be around 28 million tons, uh, around 80% of the pro forma in 2024. That's pretty cool stuff. Uh, hats off to them and uh, the people there. Both companies have some good folks at Atlas and High Crush. Um, at the time I'm recording this right now, it is, uh, we've got uh, WTI at 78.20. Uh, the dollar is uh, kind of hanging tough at a 103.91. Uh, Nat gas is at 189. Uh, I don't understand that one. And Brent is at 82.12. So uh, with that, there's a few others that are doing quite well out there. 
uh, in the market. And anyway, um, hey, I appreciate everybody listening to our podcast. Uh, subscribe, like, share, and uh, stay tuned. Please fill out uh, a survey if you would. Let us know your thoughts. Ask us questions. Uh, check out survey at energynewsbeat.com or .co. And uh, we want to hear from you. If you're an industry leader, we want to talk to you. If you're in the nuclear, wind, solar, we've got some great guests coming around the corner. I'm visiting with Robert Bryce tomorrow. And then also with, on Monday with the uh, energy realities with Irina Slav. Tammy Nemeth and David Blackman. And uh, we've got a lot more great ones coming around the corner. Thanks and have a great day.